Hey, uh, welcome back. This is another lightning review, this time of Push Down Automata. So this is a companion video to lecture six of the course. And if you'd like to look at this material in the textbook, it is pages 111 to 114 of Sipser. So what is a push down automaton? We've previously seen deterministic finite automata, DFAs, and non-deterministic finite automata, NFAs. Um, but we also saw languages, non-regular languages, that those automata could not recognize. And to try to fix that, we invented a new type of automaton with an additional superpower. In particular, this automaton has access to a stack of symbols. So this is called a push down automaton, also known as a PDA. And in addition to just reading the input string and moving forward, which it does, just like an NFA or a DFA, it also has access to this stack memory. And it can put things onto its stack memory, that is, push them onto the top, or it can pop things from the top of its stack memory. At any given point in time, it only has access to the thing it's just popped off the top. It can't see the things below that. So on one step of computation, a PDA computes like the following. We'll read in an input character. This is the same as a DFA or NFA. Uh, like an NFA, we can also read in an empty string. We can take an epsilon transition. We also are allowed to pop a character off the stack. So we can pop something off and see what was on the top of our stack by popping it off. Um, we can also pop off the empty string, that is, don't pop anything off of our stack. If we want to skip that step. Third, we move to a new state. And fourth, we push some character onto the stack. So the new steps here are steps two and four. And um, they're optional. We can push and pop empty strings, which is the same as not pushing or popping anything at all. Um, but these two new potentialities are the things which will change how our PDAs work. So let's see an example. Um, here is a push down automaton that recognizes the language A, that is A to the N, B to the K, C to the N such that n and k are greater than or equal to zero. So this will be some string of a's followed by some string of b's followed by some string of c's um, with the strings of a's and c's having equal length. The string of b's can be any length, can be any k. So let's watch what this particular automaton does. We'll follow the branch of computation that accepts if we plug in the string, maybe a, 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 b, b, c, c, c. So we'll start at Q0, and then we'll take this first transition. Transitions in pushdown automata use this little format of A comma B arrow C, where the first character is what we read in from the input. In this case, we don't read in anything. Uh, the second character is what we pop off the stack. So. When we start, our stack is empty. There's nothing to pop off. And finally, the third thing we write down is the character we push onto the stack. So we can gloss this transition as do nothing except push this dollar sign. You might think it's weird to push a dollar sign when we're just talking about A's, B's, and C's in our input string, but this is actually a pretty common tactic. Uh, the dollar sign will serve as our marker for the bottom of the stack. When we get to the bottom of the stack at the very end, 
once we're back down to an empty stack with just a dollar sign, we can pop off that dollar sign. That is, read in nothing, pop the dollar sign, push nothing, and that will tell us we are done. We've popped off all of the information that we added over the course of our computation. So the dollar sign is the bottom of the stack marker. Now we find ourselves in Q1. So yes, there is some branch that takes this epsilon transition immediately, but we're going to focus on the branch that hangs out in Q1. And um, we can read this transition as read in an A from the input string, pop nothing off the stack, that's the epsilon, and then push an A onto the stack. So after we take this transition three times, our stack will have a dollar sign at the bottom, and it'll have an A on it for each A we read in on our input string. And at that point, we can no longer take this edge because it's no longer possible to read in an A from our input string. We've read in all the A's. So uh, we'll consider the branch that then takes the epsilon transition. So this thing is just like an old fashioned epsilon transition in our NFAs. It says, read in no input character, pop nothing and push nothing. In other words, don't do anything, just split and have one branch go to Q2 while the other branch stays behind. Um, this particular transition from Q2 tells us read in B, don't push or pop. So we take this transition and it will not change our stack because we don't push or pop anything, but it'll let us read in these two Bs and just sort of move past them. So at this point in our execution, we have read in AAABB, our stack contains three A's on top of a dollar sign, and um, we are moving on. We can take this epsilon transition from B to C, to, from Q2 to Q3. Um, finally, this transition can be read as read in a C and pop off an A. So if we take this transition three times, every time we read in a C, we also pop an A off the stack. So by the time we're done, we have both reached the end of our input string, and we've also popped off every A that we put on the stack. Uh, at that point, we can then pop off the dollar sign, and we end up in Q4 with um, having read in our whole input string and having nothing in our stack. So we accept, just as in a regular NFA, if at least one of our branches accepts. Now, I'm not going to follow all of the branches that don't accept, but I'll give you a very brief overview. Um, for example, suppose I considered my branch of computation that reached Q1 and took the epsilon transition before I'd read in all my A's. Well, now it's impossible for me to take the trip the transitions that require me to read in B's and C's because my next character is an A. The only thing that branch can do is follow epsilon transitions to Q3, at which point uh, there's A's on the stack. So we can't pop the dollar sign and that transition dies. There's nothing for it to do. Uh, likewise, we might have a string like AAABBCCCA with another A at the end. In that case, we would have a branch make it to Q4, but there'd be another A to read afterwards. The same thing would happen if we had more C's than A's. If we had more A's than C's, we would make it to Q3. We'd pop off some of the A's, but we would not be able to pop off all of the A's. We'd find ourselves in a position where there's no more C's to read in, so we can't pop off any more A's by taking this bottom transition. And our stack is not empty, so we can't pop off our dollar sign and reach the end. So I think if you follow all of those other paths, you'll find reasons why um, these computational branches eventually get to a point where they die. They have no exiting transitions. So, but we traced in particular um, how this PDA could use its stack to essentially count the A's and then match them against the C's and accept if and only if we had the same number of A's and C's. So we'll conclude with the formal definition of a pushdown automaton. Uh, which looks a lot like the formal definition of an NFA. It's got one extra character, 
this hangman looking thing that is a capital gamma. So a push down automaton is a six tuple, Q, sigma, gamma, Q0, F, and delta, where most of these letters have familiar roles. So Q will tell us our state set. In the example above, that's just Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Uh, sigma tells us the input alphabet. So that is the alphabet of characters that are allowed to be in input strings. For us, that'll be A, B, and C in the example above. Now, gamma is the stack alphabet. So that's a set that might be different from sigma, and it contains all the characters that our pushdown automaton puts on the stack. So in particular, in this case, we'll push a dollar sign onto the stack. That'll be our special character for marking the bottom. And we'll also push and pop A's. So that's our stack alphabet. I suppose if we wanted to um, be a little more inclusive, we could call our stack alphabet dollar sign ABC, even though we don't actually use B's and C's, that's probably okay too. Um, all we wanna make sure is that we're including all of the characters that we will use on the stack. The input alphabet should be restricted to just characters that we're allowed to see on the input. So this PDA's behavior is undefined if it sees a dollar sign on the input string, because it's not a part of the input alphabet. Q0 is the start state, that's familiar, and F is the set of accept states. So as usual, those parts um, are fairly straightforward and the transition function is where the real meat of this definition is. So delta is a transition function that maps three inputs to uh, a set of pairs as outputs. So we can read this transition function as saying, um, give me as input a state, some state in Q, an input symbol, or the empty string. Remember, that's what our sub epsilon means. It means that this symbol corresponds to the input alphabet union with the empty string. Likewise, this is the stack alphabet union with the empty string. So this transition function says, give me as input one state, one input symbol or the empty string, and, um, and a stack symbol. or the empty string. Um, so in particular, where these characters are coming from, the state is what state we're in, the input symbol is what symbol we're reading, and the stack symbol is the symbol that we're popping off the stack. So you can read these three things off of, for example, um, beginning of a transition. This says if I read in the empty string, I pop an empty string off the stack, and I'm coming from Q0, well, it's got to tell me where to go. So it'll say, um, go to this state and push this stack symbol. Uh, so in particular, we could go to state Q1 and push a dollar sign. That's sort of the output of this transition. It says where to go and what to put on the stack. The last little wrinkle here is that I haven't mapped to Q cross uh, gamma sub epsilon. I've mapped to the power set. So what I'm really saying is go to these pairs of state push symbol. So my real output is a list of places to go and things to push because uh, our PDAs are allowed to be non-deterministic. So on a particular input state symbol and stack symbol, um, my push down automaton could tell me to go to multiple different places. And each time I go to those different places, I could push a different symbol onto the stack. That's why we have this power set notation here. So um, an example of this, perhaps we're in state Q1. Um, we read the input symbol A 
and we pop the empty string, nothing off the stack. And perhaps that tells us uh, one branch, go to state Q1 and push an A onto the stack. Some other branch, go to state Q6 and push nothing on the stack. And those would be the two things I would do on that transition. So that is our summary of the formal definition of a pushdown automaton. Uh, thanks for watching this lightning review, and I will see you in class.